Hey gang, and welcome back to Nerdphoria. It is officially episode 5, by my reckoning. And let's start the day with some news. You thought the zombie apocalypse was bad. You thought the Mayan calendar's 2012 doomsday disaster was bad. But here's the real kicker. Now we really know that the world is going to end this year. Because in Canada, Chad Kroger of the band that nobody really wants to talk about ever, Nickelback meaning, <laughs> um, is now engaged to fellow Canadian singer Avril Lavigne. She should have stayed with the Sim 41 guy, just saying. But maybe their last album wouldn't have been as good as it was. But if she had stayed with him, maybe her most recent albums wouldn't have been as bad as they are. Because, judge me all you want, but I really loved and I still am quite a big fan of her first two records. That's what it is, okay? Uh, more nerdy news. We have Doctor Who Season 7 slated to premiere September 1st on BBC America. I envy all of you suckers that have that channel. J.J. Abrams' new program, Revolution, is set to premiere on NBC sometime this September, and I'm very excited to see what happens from that. He has another show, at least originally conceived by J.J. Abrams, being Fringe, and one of my favorite programs on the air right now, will premiere its final season Friday, September 28th. And we will see if the Fringe team can truly tackle this one great final hurdle, because I don't know how they're going to get out of it. J.H. Wyman, current producer, has said that they already know how it's going to end. And they say that fans would be really, really happy with the way it ends. And also, I have seen talk on the internet from John Noble, Peter Joshua Jackson, and some of the other cast, as well as some of the producers of the show, that Season 5 may not actually be the end of Fringe. It may be the end of it as a TV series, but movies and other things might come into play. We just have to wait and see. Do you want a Fringe movie? If you are a fan of Fringe, and you think a Fringe movie would be awesome, please comment in response to my video along that thread, because I would love to hear it. Okay, and now to the meat and potatoes of this episode. Per the request of one of my fans on the interwebs, a diminutive little young lady from somewhere across the globe, who goes by the internet moniker Little Miss, would really love me to have a Legend of Zelda themed episode. So, here it is. Okay, so I have to say, through the years, my life as a gamer has been pretty spotty at best. Um, ever since I was little, I remember there being a console in my house. I was raised pretty much on Nintendo. And it was awesome. And I remember playing the original Legends of Zelda game, the very first game. Um, funny thing is, my grandmother actually owned a copy of it. She was really into Nintendo for a while. Well, she didn't really make it past Super Nintendo, but that's one of the best game systems ever, anyway. Um, but moving on. Um, it was the original Legend of Zelda game, and it was also the original release. Golden Cartridge? Can you say... Oh my god. I just did for you, don't worry. Um, but the very first Zelda game I actually owned was Ocarina of Time, which when I got my Nintendo 64 a couple years after everyone else did, 
the first game that I got with my Nintendo 64 was The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Many memories, many good memories. I remember actually having my brother help me get through a few of the dungeons because I was just kind of scared. And the graphics were really good at the time, and it's really funny to look at the way things have progressed and see, wow, that was the cutting edge. But even though they do look a little dated, I'm not talking about the 3DS remake of it, the graphics on that game are still pretty spot on. A lot less glitches than some of the other M64 games. Whatever. I mean, do you remember Super Mario 64? Do you remember all the camera glitches? I do, and they were bad. They were horrible. They were scary. Um, and then, of course, I got Majora's Mask a couple years later, which was such a different game compared to anything else in the series before or before it or since. And the, the three-day concept was just so cool to me. I can't really explain why it was so cool, but it really was. It wasn't just the, oh my god, the monsters are coming out at night. It was like, oh my god, there's only one more day. What do I do? What do I do? And, of course, I, as well as a bunch of other people, purposely watched the game over sequence with the moon falling. Purposely allowed it to happen. And... I was scared to death. I mean, given 2012 the name of the world and all that? Yeah, uh... Good segue. Uh, but the the masks and Goron Link, Deku Link, Zora Link, what, it's like, it was so awesome. I wish another Zelda game would put that mechanic into play again. And then there is Wind Waker, which GameCube my very first pre-order Zelda game and one of the most unique Zelda games, at least in the visual sense the cel shaded graphics were I was a little skeptical at first, I mean just because all, all the hub hub had been all over here so wow, we go from sort of realistic to this it's like it's a cartoon, it looks like a kid thing, it's like Yes, but gamers are nerds. A lot of gamers are the kinds of people that watch cartoons. Uh, anime, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So they, the people that watch cartoons the most were having an outcry that something looked like a cartoon. But it worked wonders. And the reason I consider it one of my favorite games, uh, one of the reasons, because I thought the gameplay was solid, a bunch of the items you use are solid. The only thing that makes me not consider it the best game in the series is the fracking boat. That sailing everywhere thing is just so frustrating. And it really took away from what was a most incredible game. I like how Wind Waker was also good at cementing where each game in the series takes place, which is still really confusing considering everything apparently takes place at a different time, but the characters are apparently the same people, and yada yada yada, and Link and Zelda never actually do end up together because there's no way they could all be descended from each other, and shack up at the end, of course. Um, But the graphics were beautiful, the music was great, it was like new characters that I loved, like Makar, and he was my favorite. He was really funny, um, and adorable. And Link had the most expression that I've ever seen from him. Cartoon style really added dramatic effect, like nothing else, like the bomb explosions and everything, it was so good. And then... There came Twilight Princess, which, as soon as I heard about it, I was pumped. It was like the Shadow Realm and all. It's like just thinking Link to the Past from the Super NES, which I do have a copy of that as well. Um, but it was just such a nostalgia feel for that reason. Um, probably one of the most beautiful 3D games to exist on a Nintendo system, surely. Um, the use of the horse was good. I, I kind of like the 
dynamic where the world was a lot more open because you'd go to the potion shop and you could actually just go like stick your bottle in there and run off with it and have the bird chasing you and old woman like screaming it was hilarious not to condone the act of stealing but I'm sure if you've played Twilight Princess you've done it at least a few times and the transformation into the wolf that was the coolest thing ever to be added to a Zelda game. Like, it was a great way to get around. The songs were kind of frustrating and everything. And also the fact that it came out on two systems was also very weird. But to be the last great game on the GameCube and the first great game on the Wii? What other game had that claim? None. And I, in fact, have the GameCube version because the fact that I pre-ordered it and did not realize that it was going to be put out on a new system, which I couldn't afford at the time, I got the GameCube version, of course. And one of my favorite char like side characters in a Zelda game ever was Midna, the Twilight Princess herself. And to be quite honest, I loved her so much more than I have ever liked any of the Zeldas in any of the games, except maybe the next one that I'm going to talk about. And the whole end, the ending sequence of the game, when you beat the game, and the mirror gets smashed, and Min is just standing there in her like true form. And Zelda's just like smoldering at her. She's like, what the hell is this? It was one of the most touching and heartbreaking moments in video game history. And here I get to Skyward Sword. I wasn't sure what to think at first. Uh, I had a hard time calibrating the Motion Plus for a little bit of time, but once I got the hang of that, it was smooth going from there. It was the most precise motion control that I have seen in the game ever. But my fault was with the difficulty of the game, actually. Sometimes it was just so hard, I just couldn't do it. Um, the trials where you weren't allowed to use your sword, those were great. Um, the first appearance of a toilet in a Zelda game. Oh my god, that just made me laugh. Um, and then there's Groose. The Legend of Groose would be a great spin-off game. Really funny, really campy side character. Great fellow. Um, the fact that Zelda was your childhood friend and you knew her since the beginning. The fact that Link had m even more expression than he does in Wind Waker. Um, I didn't like the Ghirahim battles because they were really they were kind of clunky. Um, the fact that you had to get a weapon clash or a, or to even knock him over it was bad. Um, but I loved the fact that he looked like Lady Gaga, and I liked the way that he seemed to just, like, hit on, like, constantly. But the only thing I found more frustrating than Gary, him was the Abomination, simply because you had to fight him on... I don't even know how many separate occasions, but it annoyed the hell out of me. It took so much longer than it should have. And time shift stones. Amazing mechanic. But the thing is, Skyward Sword seems to take place before all those other games, but also seems to take place after all those other games. So, if Miyamoto and whoever else is involved in Zelda says that there's actually an official timeline, I do not believe them. Um, but I can't wait to see what comes, what is in store next for the series with the Wii U. I haven't played any of the handheld versions of handheld Zelda games, but I know I will at some point in my life. But I have played almost all of them in the main series, except for Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. But, remember, I could go on and on about this. And I will in another episode, but Little Miss, I hope you enjoyed my ramblings on Zelda, and everyone else. I hope to hear from you again soon, and I promise a lot more exciting things are coming in the future, including maybe an interview with a zombie.